<laughs> welcome to Wednesday and welcome to Midday Live. And we have with us at this point Otto and Eric Preminger, very unique father and son who have never really appeared together in this context, uh, context before to discuss the uniqueness of their relationship. We'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, also on today's show, we have Stanley Evans with an eye test for children, and it's a very important thing. And also, uh, all struggling writers can identify with Mara Wilson, who will be with us in a few minutes, who is the little man against the big publishing houses. Later in the show, we have a debate. The local environmentalists are really up in arms in East Brunswick, New Jersey, because of a bicentennial park that is uh, being built there, and they're tearing down a great many trees. But right now, Otto Preminger and Eric Preminger, unique, a father and son who have not really appeared publicly before to discuss the nature of their relationship. Eric uh, was Otto's son, born out of wedlock uh, to Gypsy Rose Lee. Until recently, this wasn't really public knowledge, and the relationship was kept at a distance. But a few years back, Otto acknowledged it and adopted Eric. And we welcome you. Thank you for coming. You act as though I did him a favor. <laughs> Do you realize how long I had to ask him until he <laughs> let me adopt him? Well, let's find out about it because uh, he's I a very difficult man. He, er, your son is a very. difficult man. Yeah. It's hereditary. It runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> I have some, you know, I am at this point not at the least bit like the rest of the world an expert on you, on your relationship, and I'd like to ask some basic questions. Please, Eric, when did you first find out that Otto Preminger was your dad? Well, actually, when I was 17 years old, uh, I found out from the man who I thought had been my father. Did he know all along that N Otto was? No, nobody knew who my father was except for my mother, and and his father, and you, and you, uh, who was you? Yeah, but, but I didn't you know didn't that know you knew. Anyway, right? I didn't know who it was, and my mother was living in California, and I was living in New York, and I was 17 and having a wonderful time, and my mother didn't quite approve. And one day during one of our really big fights when she was sort of like telling me that I had to straighten up. I sort of said, well, you know, <coughs> my father isn't even really my father. And she said, that's not true. And 24 hours later, she arrived in New York. And we're sitting there, and we're talking about it. And I said, well, who is my father? And she says, it's none of your business. <laughs> Eric, during that 24-hour period, were you starting to wonder who it could be? I mean, were you like, you know, well, geez, it could be this, it could be that. What were you thinking? Well. I was really thinking of how I could possibly arrange a raise in my allowance out of the whole thing. <laughs> it was really all I cared about. <laughs> Financial considerations only. So then what happened? Well, then she told me under the agreement that I would never contact Otto until he contacted me. Mm -hmm. And so I waited, and then I went into the Army, and, but I told a lot of other people. You see, she didn't make me promise that. And eventually word got to Otto that I knew, and he called my mother, and then my mother said it was okay and we got together in now, Paris. may I say something? Otto, if you don't Which say something now. he doesn't know. What? I learned at one point that he was my son. I had no idea until I arrived in New York on the 11th of December 1944. I was at that time living in California and his mother was living here. Yes. His mother, by the way, was a charming, wonderful nice. woman. But, and I called her up, you know, because she, I didn't know what, where she was. And, she, and the maid said she's in the hospital. So I called her at the hospital. And she said this morning at 6 o'clock, we had a son. So you, I, you and Gypsy Rosalie yeah. had a son, right? So I bought flowers, went to the hospital, and offered naturally to support him. I didn't know how much he would eat. Were you <laughs> married at the time? No. But she was married to someone else? Not anymore. She was S separated. I, I don't know if she... Anyway, she yeah. said that she wants this son only for herself. She has enough money to support him. She doesn't want anybody to come in. She doesn't want him ever to know who his father was. Well, it was her son. I, I couldn't do anything <laughs> it about it. It was her call at that point. And she I, had him. And, and I said, could I come and visit him? And she said, any time you want to, you can come and visit him. The first three years or so, I used to come and visit him here. He, uh, <coughs> she had a house very close where I live now, on 63rd Street. And he was playing, you know, and I brought him some toys. But he was very young, and then Gypsy got married again. Uh, Eric, I want to ask you a question. Do you have any memories from the f age one, two, or three of a very large head? None. Looking down at you, smiling at you? You don't remember None. any visits what from I Otto? What I do have, though, which is very interesting, is that my mother used to be a home movie aficionado. 
And once she brought me and visited Otto in a house that he had in Bel Air, California. And I have a photograph of you by the swimming pool. You were already bald. <laughs> I was bald when I was 23. <laughs> and if you w would not be <coughs> so sly and would turn the back of your head to the camera, <laughs> then we would know that you are also slightly bald. Yes, well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, being a man who's I very afraid of becoming bald, I'm not going to ask you to do that. So no, leave the back of you your head. You don't have anything to worry about. May I say something? Yes. I have just finished writing my autobiography. You have? Yeah. And I don't think we should continue this conversation about Gypsy and Eric and me. We should talk about other things. Eric today is a rather intelligent man. He is working you know, in the same business, the same profession I am working. We have a lot of things to discuss. But this thing I would like to save for the people who will buy my autobiography. <laughs> save because it it's called, all in your autobiography? Yeah, it's all in there. It's called Preminger and Autobiography, and it'll be appearing in September. You know, Doubleday is publishing it. All right. May I just ask Eric one or two questions? Yeah, but he don't give away it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what? Well, I, they I'm, won't I'm, buy the book. <laughs> it's just that we've left one or two things hanging. We won't go beyond how a couple of basic things. When you learned that Otto Preminger was your father. I'm interested in a few things. First, what were your preconceptions about the man Otto Preminger? Then all of a sudden, one day, you find out that man who is a public figure is your dad. How did you react to that? Well, uh, I really didn't have a lot of a big picture on who Otto was. And I went out to sort of gather information. I remember the first bit of information I got was that he yells a lot. Yelling. Right. See? And then the first time <laughs> See we see how, how people lie about me, how they malign me, uh -huh. I actually whisper. Boy, I haven't. Uh, I'm a whisperer. This is the third time you've been on the show, and you have haven't ever yelled, yelled? yelled once. Yes, you did yell one time <laughs> at, <the show laughs> at one at a man who was sitting over here talking about censorship. Not only did you no, yell, no, but no. you turned red. I did not yell. <laughs> well, you raised. Maybe your I voice. This man had the nerve to say that movies need censorship. All right. Well, no, but I think the most important thing that we have in this country is the freedom of expression. For sure. As long as we have it, we cannot have a dictatorship. And this man looked like a little dictator. Mm -hmm. you know, I think he was even connected with some censorship body. <laughs> he was. <laughs> oh, he, listen, he deserved everything you gave him. Then why didn't There's you no bring him here today? I mean, between Eric and me, we could have beaten him up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure. Do you inherit, do you, do you now that, uh, just pursuing this line, when you found that Otto was your father, did you start saying, well, now I understand why I have this tendency to walk around and speak with a German accent? <laughs> or <laughs> now I understand no. why. No. Excuse me. And I don't even raise What are voice. you referring to? Who has a German accent? Well, the public thinks you have a German no, I'm an Austrian, and I have a slight Austrian. Just a slight. Color. Yeah, except, you know, when he's in Paris, and he gets into a cab, and he's practicing his French, the cab drivers always answer him in German. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's <laughs> very funny. I think that's very funny. Otto, we have, we have to take a commercial break. I wonder, will you practice your French and you say, uh, we'll return right after this, or we will be right back? Nous allons retourner au revenir dans deux minutes. Achtung. Right after this. Very good. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.